Hey, this is Daniel, and I'm out here on the balcony of my studio in New York City with Marissa. And it's a cloudy day, and today I want to talk about shooting on cloudy days, right? So one of the things people often say is a great time to shoot is when it's cloudy. It's like, oh, it's a good day to shoot, it's cloudy. And the reason why they're saying that is because in really sunny days, you get kind of harsh shadows, right? The, the light's coming, it's very directional, you might get the harsh shadows in the eyes and stuff. And a cloudy day, you're basically a big soft light. But one of the problems with the cloudy day is that you're going to get kind of flat light, right? It's going to be muddy and still coming from above, so you're still going to get shadow on the face. So what we want to do is think about that when we're shooting, and we'll show you some solutions, I guess. I guess. I'm not I sure guess. if I will or not. If you're, if you're lucky, I'll show you. So, all right. So I got, I'm out here. I got my Nikon. Uh, it's fitted with the 50-millimeter uh, lens. I'm shooting at a 400th of a second uh, f2.5 ISO 100. I just used the meter and the camera for that. There we go. Perfect. Um, <laughs> good fall. All right, good. All right, no, so there's no arms there. Okay, good. This is very energetic today. All right, so <laughs> we can see we're out here, a lot of stimulation. And I'm using Capture Pilot. So you, know, you guys know I shoot tethered in the Capture one, but I don't drag my computer out here. It's in the studio. So Capture Pilot is on my phone. I can see the photos as we go. Um, and we can see that, yeah, it's basically drab in the eyes. Now, one solution to that is just like in the studio or anywhere else you're going to shoot, if you are um, to get more light in the subject's eyes, they can look towards the light. So we can work her chin up. And she can be like, I'm on a roof in New York City and I have light on my face. It's so beautiful. <laughs> right. And that will give us nicer light. Right. But you don't always want to be restricted as to where the subject looks and that type of stuff. So a better solution, in my opinion, is to add a little bit of light. You could do it with a reflector, but carrying a giant reflector is usually not ideal. So I like to carry with me a small flash. This is a Profoto A1. You guys, you know, whatever flash you have, uh, you can put on the camera. The important part is you want to have some kind of bounce card or diffuser on it, because what we're going to do is kind of mix the light together. So if I just leave my flash on TTL, which is the, you know, it's going to give me an automatic exposure, um, we're going to get that kind of flashy look that people don't tend to like. But let's do that first to kind of showcase that. Let's showcase that, right? So we can see. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's, that's it's amazing. Cool. So good. So yeah, you know, it's got that, it's really harsh, right? It's overexposed. It looks like I used a flash. We want it to feel natural. So we're out here on a cloud today. We want a nice natural look. So I'm going to use exposure, uh, flash exposure compensation. And I'm going to dial it down. Three stops is all we've got with this flash. So uh, I'll use that to start. And if we need more, then we'll mix with it. Good. Now we've got Nice light on her face, little catch light in the eyes, even, but the exposure looks natural with the environment. So there's a few tips to do in this. Number one, you want to put your flash from the same direction that the, you know, the light seems to be coming. So there's a wall over here. So when we just look at Marissa, we can see one side of her face is a bit darker than the other. So I want to make sure my flash is on the side with the brighter light. It just looks more natural. It's going to fill in the scene better. If it was the opposite, you can actually just, and that's crazy. People don't know you can do this, I think. You can actually turn the flash the other way and shoot upside down, right? Because the camera will fix it. So you want to think about that, right? Where is my light coming from to make it look the most natural? So to me, that's this. And I can adjust my bounce guard as so. And we can shoot a few. Good. Good. It's pretty, really soft, right? And the great thing about uh, using TTL is that if I get closer, right, it should, yep. It should compensate no problem. If I get further away, as long as the flash can go low enough and high enough power wise, it will always give you the correct exposure, you know, based on your settings. So that's one reason why in this situation I would shoot TTL versus switching it off to manual. <laughs> Beautiful, just like that, nice and fast. And it doesn't slow you down. I think that's the thing. People say, oh, you know, it takes time to meter, it takes time to use a flash. It doesn't really. Once you get going, you're basically good to go. It's just like shooting normally and you don't have to check every frame because we know that they're all perfect because every frame with Marissa is always perfect. Sure, all of them, <laughs> every single one, <laughs> all of them, every frame ever taken. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, that's the way. So the police are coming, um, so we got to wrap up. Uh, <laughs> we'll make sure I'll put Marissa's information in the, in the description so you guys can follow her. I'm, I'm going to follow her in a second. Uh, be sure to follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer. Subscribe to Adorama TV and ring the bell, and I'll see you next time on set.